ladies and gentlemen, Grant McClung wrote The Spiritual Vitality and Life Success in the Families of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were based in their experiences at the family altar. This is a very powerful truth. Many people do not understand the power of the family. And many people do not understand the power of the family altar or family devotions. It means everything and it changes everything. It makes all the difference, not only in your family, but in the world. The founders of the Church of God recognized the central importance of the family altar experience in the home and made a statement on the family altar one of their earliest measures in 1906. The General Assembly urged that the families of all the churches engage in this very sacred and important service at least once a day and at a time most convenient to the household. The pastor and deacons of each church were advised to use their influence and make special effort to encourage every family in the church to engage in this devotional exercise every day. So if you're not having family devotions with whatever kind of family you have that names the name of Christ and honors God, you're missing a whole lot. Amen. Somebody. Holy Father God, help every Christian family have family altar each and every day. Family devotions. Lord, help every Christian family to pray to you together and individually. But to meet together, preferably in the morning, and to start the day with you in prayer, to read your holy word, to sing a hymn, to honor your holy name, to give you glory, and to ask help for the journey. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now join me in reciting or reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Mean what you say and it'll mean something to you. As you well know, one of the things that God hates is people saying words that they don't mean. And this is just a simple thing of engaging your heart and mind in what you're saying, whether you are saying it from memory or you're saying it uh, by reading just mean what you're saying or don't say it at all and believe what you're saying and then it becomes something uh, that can encourage you in your faith and honor uh, and it honors God I believe in God the Father Almighty the maker of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost do you really believe that born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried he descended into hell the third day he arose again from the dead somebody ought to say glory be to God he was seen alive by Mary Magdalene I added this part he was seen alive by Mary Magdalene based upon the Word of God and the other women the disciples and over 500 other brethren he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty do you believe that because that's uh, uh, where he is right now but he's also here through the power of the Holy Spirit from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead those who are alive and those who are dead I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Church the communion of Saints the forgiveness of sins amen somebody thank God for the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting beloved if you believe those things say man and if you believe those things they ought to transform and change your life you are not to be a defeated depressed Christian mad as the devil and mean as the devil join us in reading the Word of God as our devotional reading this morning Psalm 52 verses 6 through 9 the righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him lo this is the man that made not God his strength but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it and I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints and everybody said amen to the Word of God and dr. Matthew Henry who wrote in my opinion the greatest devotional commentary ever said about these four verses those who think to support themselves in their power and in their wealth without God wretchedly deceive themselves the wicked man trusted in the abundance of his riches this reminds me of the rich man with the bonds in the Gospel of Luke who the word came to him that today your soul will be required of thee and whose things will these things be he thought as we continue with Dr. Matthew Henry 
he thought his wickedness would help him to keep his wealth. But those who by faith and love dwell in the house of God shall be like green olive trees there. And that we may be as green olive trees, we must live a life of faith and holy confidence in God and His grace. It adds much to the beauty of our profession and to fruitfulness in every grace to be much in praising God and we never can want matter for praise his name alone can be our refuge and strong tower amen somebody I would rather have the Lord than silver and gold Join me in praying for the estates, praying for the government, and all others. By the way, if you're not in a, in a hospital bed this morning, you ought to be thankful. By the way, if you have a portion of your health and strength this morning, you ought to be thankful. By the way, if you're not throwing up, can't keep anything on your stomach, you ought to be thankful. If you're not in a race to the emergency room this morning, you ought to be thankful. You see, I may feel a little bit droggy and out of it this morning. Uh, I still feel sleepy. You need to thank God that you can get up and say what you just said. Amen, somebody. So let's pray for those who are not able to do that as well this morning. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Try thanking God for all men and for all women, even your enemies, people that you don't like. You're required by God to love everybody, but being the human being that you are, you may not like everybody, but God wants you to pray for them and thank Him for them. I can't stand so and so. Well, uh, be thankful for them. Pray for them. Giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, that includes, that includes uh, presidents, prime ministers. I just can't pray for him. Yes, you can. He's my enemy. Uh, that's precisely the person Jesus has commanded that you pray for. And for all that are in authority, I can't stand her. How does she become a... Uh, a person in authority. Just pray for them and be thankful for them. As a Christian you can do it. Now if you're lost you can't do that. 
as a child of God, you can smile and go ahead on and pray for your enemies. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Mm. And by the way, I don't want to see any of you Christians out there protesting, holding up signs. Christians live a quiet and peaceful life. You pray. And uh, let that be your protest. If you will. You go to your closet. Stop trying to be seen. Stop trying to be somebody. Stop trying to uh, think. Uh, stop thinking that you're somebody powerful. That you can make a difference by yourself. Uh, pray to the only somebody who can make a permanent difference. His name is God. That's what Christians ought to be doing, praying. Let the world protest and fight and kick and buck and march down the street like some angry demons. Talking about you will not replace us. You will not replace us. The Jews will not replace us. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Come on, people. Come on, that's just ridiculous. You stay home, dear Christian friend, and go to your closet and pray. And if you want to run for office, that's fine. If you're not a preacher. We don't need any preachers who are truly called by God running for any kind of governmental office. Be that as it may. We pray for President Donald Trump. And Holy Father God, we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, life, protection, blessings upon him and his family. We pray that you would help him to confess his sins as a young Christian and to repent of his disobedience and his foolishness and his ill-advised words, be they verbal or by Twitter. Uh, he's not a perfect man. Uh, help him to uh, be humble. As a Christian, he can do it. And we pray that you would give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight. Crucify his flesh and the old man within him and fill him with the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, put some true men of God around him, true prophets that can speak to him with authority and tell him what he cannot do and what he must do as your minister in this government no matter what his response is we pray these same blessings upon vice president mike pence we pray for first lady melania trump who carries herself in a very a wise way. Second Lady Karen Pence, uh, who is doing the same. We thank you, Lord, for these women uh, who support their husbands. And Holy Father God, we thank you for our past presidents as well. Some that we uh, of course disagreed with but we pray for all of them that they would do the right thing and aid this president uh, to be what he needs to be for this country for your glory praise and honor and for this country's sake before we have another civil war on our hands we pray for all presidential aides personal aid to the president John McEntee 
We pray the same blessings upon all of these people, leaders of federal agencies, such as Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos. We pray for all state governors, uh, and we pray the same blessings upon them. Today we pray for Vermont Governor Phil Scott. And we pray for salvation, spiritual family, life blessings upon all of these people. Give them your wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight. To understand that they do not have to be confrontational all of the time. They don't have to be partisan. They can just be right. And to do the right thing for the citizens of this country. And so we pray for Fort Wayne, Indiana Mayor Tom Henry, U.S. Senators, Vermont Senator Patrick Leahy, uh, who's been around a long time, U.S. Representatives, California Representative Grace Napoleontano. We pray for all police chiefs. We pray for Lincoln, Nebraska Police Chief Jeff Blymeister. We pray for all sheriffs. We pray for Bronx County uh, New York uh, Sheriff Joseph Fusito and we pray for uh, all military leaders General Raymond A. Thomas III Commander of U.S. Southern Command and we pray for all law enforcement officials across this country and around the globe and Holy Father God uh, Lord, we pray, uh, I personally pray for all of my children uh, and, uh, and their ministries. And I pray that those who are still in college, those who are going to college, that they would take their college work seriously. And I pray for all young people who are going back to college uh, here in a few days, some already there some flying out this weekend Lord that you will help them to take their college work seriously that they would actually read the textbooks and become the citizens and yea the ministers that you want them to be and grant them protection on their campuses today in this topsy-turvy world in which we live surround them with the band of your holy angels and a wall of your holy fire place Lord upon us all the whole arm of God and we pray for the leaders of all nations around the world we pray for Haiti's president uh, Jovenel Moise and Prime Minister Jack Guy Lafontant uh, that you would give them the same wisdom we're praying for uh, our president here and the same blessings to rest upon them and Holy Father God, we pray for all church leadership. We pray that you would save those who are religious but lost. Revive those who are saved. For unfortunately, we do have a bunch of lost people in many churches who are religious and have never been born again. And we pray that you would revive those who are saved, for we have more uh, in that number no doubt and Holy Father God we pray for the leaders of the Free Methodist Church superintendents Jason Garcia Jim Jobes and Jeff Johnson and we pray that your lead God and direct them in the way that you want them to go in their denomination we pray for current events around the world not to inform you because you know all about these and more than we know uh, but by your grace we are simply being obedient to your word to pray for others and not only we ourselves we pray for the comfort of the families of the over 300 people killed in Sierra, Sierra Leone mudslides comfort those families as only you can for you're the God of all comfort we pray for the families of the six dead and 12 people wounded in a gang shooting at a hospital in Guatemala. My God help us. 
uh, oh, we pray that you'll comfort those people as only you can, for you're the God of all comfort. We pray for the families of the 27 people killed and the 83 people wounded in a suicide bombing in northeast Nigeria. My God, help us and comfort these people and these families as only you can because you're the God of all comfort. A major portion of your business is comforting people. And we pray for the recovery of the five soldiers missing in a U.S. Army helicopter crash near Hawaii. For some reason, military uh, flying vehicles are dropping out of the sky. And we pray for the comfort of the families during this time. And Holy Father God, we pray for provision and protection for the people of Sierra Leone where 200 were killed in mudslides and heavy rains. Uh, we pray for the families of the one person killed and two law enforcement officers killed amid violence, uh, racial violence between protesters in Charlottesville, Virginia for the recovery of all people wounded for peace and harmony to prevail. We thank you for what we saw last night, last week. We saw the KKK torches this week. We saw uh, good white folks and others holding up candles. They had to gather without the aid of social media for the most part because they didn't want to rile up others to come out and cause a problem for them. And they had a peaceful demonstration last night and we give you the glory, praise and honor for that. And Holy Father God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And Lord, we thank you for your holy word. We pray for persecuted Christians around the world <clears throat> that you would comfort them as only you can. Grant them grace in their trying hours and in their dying hours. And Holy Father God, we pray for the media, uh, another state, and we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, financial, life, protection, blessings. Uh, we pray that you give these people wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight. We pray for Dana Bash, Pamela Brown, and Tom Foreman. And Holy Father God, we pray for the people who have sent in prayer requests to us here at Gospel Light Society International and Gospel Light House of Prayer. We pray for David. Bless the Christian motion picture he wants to make. Have it to witness uh, to many people. We pray for Victor. Save his girlfriend, her father, and her siblings. Give her strength to forgive them. We pray for Tiffany. Bless her family, especially her husband. We pray for Emmanuel. Arellano. Rosso, bless him with good health, happiness, and peace of mind. Bless her mother uh, and son with healthy lives always as well. We pray for Bernard, help him to get away from God-hating people and make them cease from demonic activity. Uh, please save their souls, change their lives. We pray. For Esther, please bless the children she helps with sponsors. We pray for the children that my children support and uh, love and care for around the world. And uh, we pray that they would grow in you and be provided for through the money that they give. We pray for Marie. Heal her of severe bone pain, strengthen her immune system, and cleanse her entire body. Strengthen Dean's immune system as well. 
We pray for Eric to help them to continue winning souls and following your instructions. Bless them with Bibles in their language, sound equipment, and microphones, and bless them with a church building to worship you in. We pray for Coral. Bless her and her husband with a good reply from the Canadian High Commission regarding their move from India to Canada. We pray for Joythi. Heal her of her tumor without having to get an operation and protect her unborn baby. Give her and her baby complete healing and good health. We pray for Joseph. Bless him to do well in school and bless his graduation this year. Now, Holy Father God, we pray for people who have trusted you as Savior and have uh, uh, sent in information about the, their conversion. We pray for Carrie. Help these all to grow in the faith. We pray for Caro. We pray for Japhet. We pray for Vincent. We pray for Japhon. We pray for Sam. And we pray for Niabutu. And Lord, please rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts from them and help them to grow strong in the faith and help us to be good disciplers of the disciples. We also pray for people who have recommitted their lives to you, Lord Jesus. This is, uh, we do not give this invitation, but people ever since the beginning have been responding and saying, I am saved, but I got away from the Lord. And now I want to rededicate my life to him. And we thank you for these as well. Help them to stand strong in the faith. And help them not to go back into the world. We pray for Tammy. We pray for Moffat. We pray for Joni. We pray for Kizzy. We pray for Anne. We pray for Johannes. And we pray for Fode. And we commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And for his sake, amen. At this time, beloved, we're going to do our uh, devotional reading as we come to a close. The title of our devotional reading is The Grace and Glory of God from Morning and Evening by Charles Spurgeon. Evening and Morning <clears throat> by the great Charles Spurgeon. This devotional has been chosen by my daughter Daniqua White. And is one of the most popular devotionals on the Gospelite Society site. One of the most popular uh, things we provide for Christians around the world to grow in their faith. He goes on to share with us the Word of God. Psalm 29 verse 2 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. God's glory is the result of his nature and acts. He is glorious in his character, for there is such a store of everything that is holy and good and lovely in God that he must be glorious. The actions which flow from his character are also glorious, but while he intends that they should manifest to his creatures his goodness 
and it does and his mercy and his justice he is equally concerned that the glory associated with them should be given only to himself we must give God the glory do his name amen somebody are you doing that this morning or is it still all about you you want all lights on you you want everybody focused on you you want everybody to notice you may God deliver us from these so-called Christians where it has to always be about you do they notice me do don't they realize that I'm somebody did they notice my red bottom shoes did they notice my new outfit when I walked into the church where we all are supposed to be looking at God not you in the first place it's one thing to dress in something clean and decent but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a another thing beloved to dress in a way going to the house of God to bring attention to yourself to bring attention to your face by putting all kinds of things on it to bring attention to your body now let me break it down for you to bring attention to your booty in the house of God is a sin against God and we have too many Christians who dress to bring attention to themselves not only in the church but in other places as well when it should not be about you it's about God we ought to give glory to God and all of the glory that is due his name because he's concerned about that stop trying to divert attention to yourself to your gift to your ability showing off don't you hate it when a singer gets up to sing in church just and they talk and talk about how this God is doing this in their lives and you know, just shut up and sing please God deliver us from these singers who get up and gotta preach <laughs> baby we didn't call you to preach you need to sing and, and when you're saying walk off the stage after you finish with some humility uh, and don't receive any hand claps any applause any praise you you give it all to God because he's the one who gave you the ability to sing if you can sing in the first place amen somebody same thing for preachers who have a little gift to preach and they get all caught up in the style of the preaching and how you say it in a stylish way instead of just delivering the Word of God where the Word of God gets the glory the praise God gets the glory praise and honor because it is his word not yours in every situation it ought to be like you and I are not even there that they don't remember us they remember God for if they can remember you you have your reward nor is there aught in ourselves in which we may glory you know that we have nothing nothing to glory about pardon me <coughs> nothing if you're beautiful God made you beautiful if you're white God made you white if you're black God made you black now we got another movement going on titled my black is beautiful
Now we have white lives matter. Wow. We're all about ourselves. Whatever we have, beloved, God gave it to us. If you can sing, God gave you the ability. If you can preach, God gave you the ability. If you can write, God gave you the ability. Give him the glory, do his name. Amen. Somebody. Nor is there aught in ourselves in which we may glory, for who maketh us to differ from another? And what have we that we did not receive from the God of all grace who made us? Nothing. And stop saying I follow Paul and I follow Peter and I follow. Uh, God is the one who gets the glory. God is the one who gives the increase. Can somebody shout amen? Then how careful ought we to be to walk humbly before the Lord? We ought to be careful. <laughs> we ought to be careful to walk humbly before the Lord. The moment we glorify ourselves, since there is room <clears throat> for one glory only in the universe, we set ourselves up as rivals to the Most High. Shall the insect of an hour glorify itself against the sun which warmed it into life? Shall the potsherd exalt itself above the man who fashioned it upon the wheel? Can you imagine something that you made with your own hands start outshining you? Shall the dust of the desert strive with the whirlwind? Give unto the Lord, all ye righteous. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto him the honor that is due unto his name. Amen, somebody. Yet it is, perhaps, one of the hardest struggles of the Christian life. To learn this sentence not unto us not unto us but unto thy name be glory it is a lesson which God is ever teaching us and teaching us sometimes by most painful discipline let a Christian begin to boast I can do all things without adding through Christ which strengtheneth me. And before long he will have to groan. I can do nothing and bemoan himself in the dust. When we do anything for the Lord and he is pleased to accept of our doings. Let us lay our crown at his feet and exclaim, Not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Can somebody say amen? Holy Father God, we give you the glory, praise, and honor due your name this morning. Help us all to truly understand without you we can do nothing worthwhile and that will last throughout eternity help us to humble ourselves before you and to give you the glory due your name in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake amen now beloved before I leave you today if perhaps you happened upon us and you're not a Christian you're not a believer in Christ 
you partly understood what I was even talking about. If you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Jesus Christ has a word for you this morning. That's right, Jesus Christ himself, the God-man, Emmanuel, God with us, said to you and to me, for God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten son. His name is Jesus. In fact, he was speaking about himself. That whosoever, that means anybody at any time, that includes you. Believeth in him, believeth in Christ, should not perish, perish where? Perish in hell forever, but have everlasting life in heaven with God. Now in the words of Curtis Hudson, that is the gospel in a nutshell. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9, and 13, this is what did it for me, December the 19th, 1979, when I was 19 years old. When I saw these words, and I shall never forget these words bouncing off that page that night, I got saved. That if thou, that if you shalt confess with thy mouth your mouth, the Lord Jesus, <clears throat> the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou, you, you shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from sin and hell. For sin causes hell. Your belief in Christ brings about heaven. For whosoever, there's that word again, whosoever means anybody at any time, and that includes you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so, dear friend, if you want to be saved today, it is very simple. Yes, it is very easy to be saved. Contrary to what some preachers will try uh, to uh, tell you, it is not hard. Why would God make it hard for such ignorant sinners as we are? He made it very easy. It was not easy for him, and it was not easy for Jesus, the God-man, to roll sin, all of our wickedness and sin, on himself and take it to the cross as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Glory be to God. But it's easy for you and me to be saved. And all you have to do is believe. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to shake the preacher's hand to be saved. You don't have to get baptized to be saved. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to uh, do some good work down in the YMCA to be saved or volunteer work to be saved or any kind of work to be saved. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Pray and ask Him to save you. That's it. These other things are important and uh, we can talk about those things later but right now you need to be saved. So believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again and he will save you and I'll be glad to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer that I prayed led by Michael uh, Lewis December the 19th 1979 repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart Holy Father God I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in my life before your sight. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. And uh, as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
I believe that he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And change my life. Help me to repent of my sins past. And help me to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now beloved, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you prayed that prayer with me. And you meant it from your heart. I declare to you that based upon the Word of God in the Bible, you are now saved from sin and hell and you're on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10:9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer.